Good morning and welcome to New Beginnings House of Worship, where we come to worship a live and a living God. We thank you for being here with us this morning as we continue to worship God in spirit and in truth. And we're going to ask Sister Rosalind Turnipsey to come and welcome you into this worship experience. Sister Rosalind. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to New Beginnings House of Worship. We want to welcome you again today and just pray that there's something said that will just complete and enhance your journey and your walk with God. We want to wish a very, very happy birthday to my friend and sister Margie. Uh, she's celebrating her birthday today. She was one of my co-workers. Uh, and I also want to say a happy birthday to Miss Deirdre Jones. She'll be celebrating her birthday this uh, week. And we just pray that she'll have a beautiful day as well. We want to leave you today with your thought. Actually, two thoughts. Ladies, don't forget to schedule your mammogram for um, breast excuse me, Breast Cancer Month, and also, you know, you can do it anytime, not just the month of October. Just remember to keep that in mind and just um, take and schedule that important exam. And also, we just want to keep those lifted in prayer who may be going through breast cancer at this time and praise and thank God for the ones who just completed that journey and is free of cancer. And just keep everyone lifted and in prayer. We also want to just give you a thought for this upcoming election. Just when you go in that that box, just remember to think about, is this someone that Jesus is, has Jesus in them, or is it, they have a close walk with Jesus? It doesn't take much for you to look and see that. So just keep God in prayer and just remember, he's, he's already uh, excuse me, presented everything that you need, providing your needs. Just keep the faith, stay in prayer, and trust in him. Have a blessed day. God bless you. Pastor Turn of Seat. Amen. Thank you for that welcome. <clears throat> and ladies uh, and men, uh, Breast Cancer Awareness Week, uh, Breast Cancer Awareness Month. Uh, we're coming to the end of that, and we want to make sure that we uh, let you remind you about that and to think of those things to get your exams um, and make sure that you're staying safe. We want to wish a special um, uh, prayer for one of my co workers, former co workers, Cherry Atha Subanasakura. Uh, uh, she was the, uh, still is, the chemistry teacher at National School of the Arts, and she's going through a few things there. And so we just pray that uh, her procedure and all goes well with her and her family. Uh, and so we also want to give a shout out to some birthday wishes. Some of my former students here, Michaela Gilbert, uh, happy birthday to you. One of my uh, darling little kids that I, used to be a darling little kid. Now she's a grown woman. Uh, Michaela Gar Gilbert, uh, Michaela Gardner, happy birthday to you. Uh, Caitlin Fitzpatrick, happy birthday. Uh, to our dear friend, uh, Traboria Anderson, she just celebrated her birthday this week. And we want to give a, a posthumously give a happy heavenly birthday to one of the greatest saxophone players and greatest uh, gentlemen that we've known at Nashville School of the Arts, Mr. Richard Griffin. Happy heavenly birthday to you as well. And so this morning we have a message from God for you. We want you to get your word out and stay tuned for what God has to say because God has uh, something richly to uh, to something to bless us richly in our lives. And so we encourage you to get your word out. I'm going to be coming from Genesis chapter 12, and we're going to lift up verses 1 through 4. That's Genesis chapter 12, and we will lift up verses 1 through 4. I'm going to be reading from the King James Version, but whatever version of the Bible you have, keep that out and follow along with us to hear just what God has to say to us this day. That is King, Je I mean, excuse me, Genesis chapter 12, Verses 1 through 4. Amen. And so the word of God says, Now the Lord had said unto Abram, Get thee out of thy country, and from thy kindred, and from thy father's house, unto a land that I will show thee. And I will make of thee a great nation, and I will bless thee, and make thy name great, and thou shalt be a blessing. And I will bless them that bless you, and curse him that curses you. And in thee shall all families of the earth be blessed. So Abram 
departed as the Lord had spoken unto him, <clears throat> and Lot went with him. And Abram was seventy and five years old when he departed out of Haran. Amen. This is the reading of God's word. And so for a thought today, we want to leave you with this title, It's Time to Get Out. It's Time to Get Out. The biblical truth we want to leave with you in this message is that to be the blessing God has ordained you to be, you have to, you must leave some stuff behind. To be the blessing that God has already ordained you to be, you must leave some stuff behind. When I think about this message, uh, one of the things came up to me is our comfort zones. You know, we, we have a comfort zone area where that that sweet spot that everything is all right and we're just saying thank you lord i just, I just need to get to my comfort zone my, my comfortable place for some of us that might be home uh, your home is, is a place after working all day or being out with friends or doing all these things coming back home is your comfort zone and so when you're home, don't, okay, don't bring, I don't want to talk about work. I don't want to talk about that problem. I don't want to talk, this is home. Or maybe in your own home, maybe it's a special room that you have. Your, maybe it's your bedroom that you, you go to and when everybody else is doing what they want to do and you need to just kind of get away for a minute, you just go to your room or uh, maybe it's a special room in the house that you go to. You want, you go to that comfort zone where you feel good and you feel at ease. Maybe uh, even with social gatherings. It could be social gatherings that, that you find your comfort zone. Being around friends uh, that, that just celebrating something. And it don't even have to be a major milestone. Just getting together and celebrating life itself. Uh, when you're, there are two different types of social gatherings where you could find your comfort zone. Or two that I will talk about anyway. And one is when you're with friends that you know, that, that you're really close with. You know each other. You, you all celebrate things together. You, you do things together. You know each other. You've grown up together. And then maybe other social gatherings that you go to where it may be some special event and everybody's going to this concert or maybe to this occasion. And you don't know everybody there. You know some of the people. You, but it's something about that occasion that, that you like and you want to get there. Maybe it's to listen to jazz or uh, you go and, and, and to this event at some place and you're listening to jazz and just mingling with friends. That's those social gatherings. When you're with those people that you're close to, you know you can trust, you can let your hair down, and you're comfortable talking about this, that, or the other. You, you don't have to uh, get into something too deep, but if you have to get into something deep, you know you're around friends and, and you can share those things, those comfort zones. Maybe it's being with a companion. Maybe it's your husband, your wife, uh, or maybe it's your fiance, or someone you've been dating, or uh, just being around someone who's a very close friend. You have your other friends you get with in social gathering, but when you really want to get with someone to talk about something or deal with an issue, you know you can call on that friend as a companion, as, a, as someone that you can really relate to and be intimate with and in your discussion and allow yourself to be vulnerable. Companionship. Sometime is a good comfort zone. You just want to get together and, and, and go for a walk in the park. And, and, and maybe you just go around and sit at the park bench and chit-chat for a little while. Or whatever the case may be, companionship uh, can be a good comfort zone for some people. But, you know, it's okay to be comfortable with life situations. But we should never get so comfortable that we end up failing to hear and, and to move when God speaks to us. When God speaks to us, we need to listen, obey, and move when he says move. And sometimes we get in our comfort zones and we fail to uh, really listen to God because, God, I don't want you to move me from this situation. I don't want you to move me to some place that I'm not familiar with. And so that moves that, that brings us to the first uh, thing that we want to look at in this message today. And that is the move of God in verse 1. When God gives you a command to do something, how do you really respond? Do you respond with hesitancy? Do you respond in ways that uh, uh, 
you're doubtful as to whether God really said it. And I'm, I'm just going to stick around here a little bit longer because I believe I can make this thing work. I think I can do that right where I am. And we get stuck in some things and some situations sometimes. Sometimes, though, that move that we need to make, uh, when we need to leave some stuff behind, and it doesn't always have to be a comfort zone place, a comfort zone that's beneficial, let me put it that way. Because sometimes we're in comfort zones that we think we're good there and everything is lovely and nice, but it's just a life full of sin. And you just need to cut that out, let it go. But notice here in this text how God, God's directions, how God di directs uh, them to move from the general to the specific. Notice how his directions go from general to the specific. He said, get out of thy country. Get out of thy kindred from around that kindred and from thy father's house. Look what he says in verse one. Now the Lord had said unto Abram, get thee out of that country and from thy kindred and from thy father's house unto a land that I will show you. I want to take you somewhere. I have something for you to do. And I want you to make that move. There's that song that it <laughs> just popped in my head. Make that move right now, baby. Okay, all right, all right. We're going to get into all of that. Uh, and the, the country, get out of that country. God goes from the general to the specific so that he can uh, really drill down to uh, Abram about where he's, what he's going to leave behind in order to go to where he needs to be. He says, get out of thy country, his place of identity. And, and now let's, let's be uh, more uh, real here in this text here, that Abram being in Babylon, he, he wasn't a Babylonian. They were nomadic people. They traveled from place to place, but he stayed there. So not only for some people, your country is where you're from. Uh, maybe you're from uh, uh, the United States, or maybe you're from Canada or China or wherever your country is that, that God's telling you to move from. That's your identity. But for, most, uh, for Abram in this case, case, it was that place where he was governed, that place which set the rules and said, this is how, if you're coming into this country, these are the things you do, and this is how you do it. These are the things you can't do. You must live by these rules and these guidelines. Get away from that place where you have settled and identified yourself as being a part of that. And see, here's the thing that we sometimes forget. <clears throat> when we associate with certain situations and certain groups, you're identifying with them. And so you can't say, uh, well, yeah, I go out and hang with that and I do that and I, I listen to this and when I do this, and I follow this, I support this group. But, you know, I don't really get into all of that. I don't do all of that. I don't do those things. Well, you're identifying with them when you say you're from there. Uh, now, that doesn't mean necessarily that if you say you're from Nashville, that everything that happened in Nashville you agree with. But when you're there and you're associating there, you're that place for which you are governed, you have to follow those rules or be subject to penalty. Get out of thy country. That's a general, that's a broad place where there are, there are thousands of people, hundreds to thousands of people that are living there. Then you get out of your country. Then you get a little more specific. Get out and away from thy kindred, your likeness. Those people who you relate to that have, that share some commonality, uh, some genetic background, some influences that are uh, 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 <laughs> born into your family, that which is most agreeable to you. You're probably more agreeable with your family. Now, I know there's some family situations, your kindred, you just no, no, I don't agree with all of that. But for the most part. Uh, in your kindred, in your likeness, those that you are most agreeable with. God says, get away from that. Get away from the country. Get away from your kindred. And now let's get even a little bit more specific. Get out of thy father's house. Your covering. 
that place where you've been living for all of this time, where your father still rules and he has the, the, the say. He sets the tone. You've been obedient. You've been following the rules and the guidelines in the house. And when God says, I have something for you and I need you to get out of your father's house so that you can be the person that I have for you to do that. You can start being the leader. You can start being the head. You start making those decisions. That which you submit to, you submit to the things under your parents' home and to your father's house. And I need you to get away from that in order for me to do what I'm trying to do for you. And not just for you, <laughs> for the nation, for the people of the world. It's, a, it's greater than you and yourself, greater than you and your country, greater than you and your kindred, greater than you and your own household, the, your father's household where you are still living. God never asked us to leave one place and not show us where to go. Isn't that something? Tell yourself, it's time to get out. It's time to get out. Look what he said. He, he said, uh, <clears throat> now the Lord said unto Abram, get thee out of thy country and from thy kindred and from thy father's house. He didn't just stop right there. He didn't just say, get out and leave. Not tell him uh, that there's something, some place for him to go. Now he didn't give him all of the directions. He gave, he told him enough. He says, but you're going to go, what? Unto a land that I will show you. I'll show you the way to get there. Oh, well, where are we going? And my, <laughs> God bless them, my grandchildren, uh, the youngest ones, sometimes we were riding around. Where are we going? Where are we this? And then I say, come on, we're going to go and do such and such. And where are we going? Where are we going? How we get there? What's that? And they ask all those questions. Just, just get in the car. Come on. Papa's going to take you someplace. We're going. We're going to the park. And what are we going to Which park? Which one is it? What are we going to do? All of those questions. And, and that's natural for children. And that's how we are sometimes with God. When he's saying to us, go, and I'm going to you to leave these things so that you can go to a place that I'm going to show you. I'll tell you which way to go. I want to know right now, which, where's the place, what's the address, who's the people there, and all these things. No, God says, just go, and I'll show you. Amen. The move of God. Not only do we need to see the move of God, but when we get that calling from God, we need to see the gift of God. Verses 2 to 3. We need to see the gift of God. God doesn't just move us, but he gives us gifts along the way. That's good news. <laughs> we miss it sometimes because we're so busy asking all of those questions. We want to know where, what, what's the address, what's this, what, do I need to go right now, and all of these things that we miss the gift that God is giving to us. Mm. Let's look at it. It's right there in the text, verses 2 to 3. And I will make of thee a great nation, and I will bless thee, and make thy name great, and thou shalt be a blessing. And I will bless them that bless thee, and curse him that curses thee. And in thee shall all families of the earth be blessed. That's the gift of God. God is blessing us in so many ways, that, and we miss it because we're too busy looking at stuff that uh, doesn't make any sense. God bless you, Jermaine, uh, nephew. Yeah. And so we, we're looking at things, the gift of God. God doesn't just move us but he gives us gifts along the way, gifts of reassurance that firm us up and make us see that this thing is more than about what I'm thinking it's about. Let's look and see what God says here. He, he gives us greatness. Look what he said. I, and I will bless thee, no, he, no, he says, and I will make of thee a great nation. Of you, Abram, you have no children, you have a wife, and I'm telling you to get away from your family and go someplace that you don't even know about yet. But I'm telling you that because you're going to be a blessing to some people. You will be great because of what I'm going to do for you. He gives us greatness. And we don't have to go out and seek it and try to make it for ourselves. It's going to come because we're being obedient to what God says. Isn't that good? <laughs> Isn't that good news that we can be great just by doing what God says and not trying to elevate ourselves and lift ourselves up to some, some certain level. He says, 
I will make thy name great. Everybody's going to know about what you've done, your obedience, how you listened to me and followed me and did the things I've asked you to do. Not only does he give us greatness, he give us blessings. He goes on and says, uh, not only will I make of thee a great nation, and I will bless thee. I will bless thee. I will give you some blessings that you, some favor, some things that you, other people look at you and wonder, how did he get that? How did she get that? Why is this happening in her life? God gives us blessings. And I was going to give you this definition a little later on, but I think I need to go on and deal with that right now. In the Old Testament, when they talk about blessings, it means to endue with power for success. The Old Testament meaning of blessing, to be endued with power for success, to, be, uh, to have prosperity and abundance of offspring and longevity. Isn't that good news? Don't, don't we all want to live uh, a long and prosperous and healthy life, doing things for our family, blessing our family, and, and, and being a blessing in, in our community, endued with power for success, that the things that you set out to do, those jobs that you decided to do, that, that business you started to, just, to go out on and, 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 and take that uh, step out there, that place that you wanted to live that nobody said you would ever get and you, would, you wanted to go out and, and buy this land and, and put your house on that and, and build from there, just go from scratch, whatever that thing is in your life that God is saying to you to do. God says, I will bless you when you are obedient to me. Not only will I make your name great, but I'll bless you in the process, the gift from God. And that's not all that he said. <laughs> he gives us prominence. Look what he's going on and says. He says, uh, I will make of thee a great nation. And I will bless thee and make thy name great. Everybody going to know about you. You know, you, you were out there, you know, you, we're celebrating our 50th uh, high school class reunion this year. So we have homecoming coming up and then we have graduation in May and our class trying to do some things. And, and you remember those people in your class that did this and did that. And people still remember the great things that somebody did. Somebody remember the silly things someone did and all of these things. But, you know, isn't it good to know that people remember you for something good that you've done? Yeah. Yeah, and, and we used to have what was called senior superlatives. <laughs> and, uh, well, I'm going to get off track. I won't get into all of that. Uh, but but th there's a lot of things that go on in life that sometimes we, we celebrate those things by giving people awards and things for, for this, for the best this, or who the future, that person, and all of these things. But you will have a great name. I will give you prominence that when people say, I am Abraham seed, I, I am Julius Turnipseed, son. Yeah, that was my, 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 that was my daddy. That was my granddaddy. That was this. Uh, my name, that name will go and will mean something when you go into places. When you're looking for that loan, he said, oh, you're so-and-so, son. That, that was your father? Okay. And, they, and they, they, they relax a little bit. He will give you prominence. And it's, not, it's never giving us greatness and blessing us and giving us prominence so that we can be something, so that we can get the big head. No, it's all about edifying the name of God and glorifying his name. And guess what? It doesn't even stop there. Not only do we get greatness, not only do we get blessings, not only will be, uh, we receive prominence uh, even long after we're gone, he gives us likeness, likeness to him. Look what it says. Let me, let me just go back at the beginning of that, verse 2. And I will make of thee a great nation, greatness, and I will bless thee, blessings, and make thy name great, prominence, and thou shalt be a blessing. That's likeness. Likeness to what? Likeness to God. <laughs> no one can bless like God blesses. And so isn't it good to know that we can be a blessing to others just as God bless us? We can do good things for other people. Isn't it time out for people to just stop trying to make everything about them? I'm going to do this for me. I'm going to make me great. I'm going to do that. No, God says, I will make you, uh, uh, I will give you greatness. I will give you the blessings. I will give you a great name. And I will give you the likeness of me that you can be a blessing to others. Mm. 
it's a shame that you can amass so much money, billionaires. And it's God, God gives us the ability to do things and to, to create things and, and to be a billionaire and hoard all that money for ourselves. Never try to help people that are going through things. What, when you die, what's going to happen with all those billions? And I'm not against being a, a billionaire or a millionaire. <laughs> Some of us just want to be a thousandaire. <laughs> just not so I can have a few thousand in the bank to take care of my needs. <laughs> and, but isn't it good that you can be a blessing to other people? I know some people that, that really are good at blessing people in their time of need. You know, and more, isn't it good that if everyone would do that and show that likeness of who God is? And isn't that what we say when we, be called out, when we call ourselves Christians? That means we are Christ-like. Why don't we show that likeness in the world and do those things that God has for us? Yeah. And for others, when we are obedient to the move of God, we are covered by the gift of God. Let me say that again. When we are obedient to the move of God, we do what he says. When we move when he says move and stay still when he says stay still. Let him show us the way. When we are obedient to the move of God, we are covered by the gift of God that we will receive greatness, we will receive blessings, we will become prominent, and we will be like him and show his likeness forth to bless others. And let, look, at, look at verse 4. It, it tells us even more about this, this gift of God. Verse 4 says, excuse me, verse 3. <clears throat> verse 3 says, And I will bless them that bless you and curse him that curses you. And in you, shall all families of the earth be blessed. That is the, the likeness of God right there, that you can bless people beyond your, your country, beyond your kindred, beyond your family, your father's house. You'll be able to bless, bless people. And when we think about this with God, and when we're obedient to the move of God, and we see that we're covered by the gift of God, God has blessings for blessings. He has blessings for blessings. I will bless them that bless you. People that do you, do right by you. People that see you and say, yes, I want to do this because I see something in you and I want to uh, bless you with this so that you can continue doing what you're doing. God says, I will bless those people. Isn't that something? Uh, one of the things in, in uh, African history, we, uh, if you've ever heard of Mansa Musa, one of the things he did, he was one of the richest kings in the world uh, that we know of. And so he had all of this gold. And so he left from uh, Africa and, and traveled up north and into uh, the northern Africa and, and, and went over into uh, 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 other countries from there. And I can't even think of the other countries he went to. But he, he, what he did he, along his journey, to, to, to get there to the coast and travel on, he would give out gold. He would just give gold out to people all along the way. And it said that in his travels, that he gave out so much gold that the price of gold just dropped dramatically because everybody had it. Along, everybody along his path, he was just giving out gold in abundance, giving it away. He was blessing other people from the blessings that he had. Not only will God be a blessing to those who bless us, look what he says. And this is why we don't have to worry about the journey. This is why we can trust the gift of God when he asks us to do something that he's there for us. He says, and I will bless them that bless thee. But look what he says. And I will curse those that curse you. You don't have to get mad and, and attack those people back the way they did you. And they do those things on this journey that I have you set on. Because when you get to the place that you're going, I need you to have a right spirit. I don't need you to have a spirit of wanting to get back all those people who tried to do something to you. You want to put them in jail and lock them up. I don't want you to be that person that when you get there, that you look out and say, well, that person didn't do something. He attacked me. And so I'm going to kick him out and fire him and get all these people out. I'm, that's not the kind of leadership God is wanting you to have. God says, if they curse you, don't worry about it. Shake the dust from your feet and I will curse them. Curses for curses. You don't have to deal with that. 
You just continue blessing people. That's why the Bible tells us to love our enemies and love them like we love ourselves. <laughs> yes, we are. Yeah, yes, 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 yes. I'm looking at it. Yes, and I think I've been trying to. Uh, I can't. I can't uh, trying to hard feelings like I'm not doing something right. Yeah, yeah, yes, yes, yes. God bless you. And sometimes we get on things and we start doing things, and it seems like we 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 know some stuff. When God asks us to move and he moves us in this way or that way with whatever that, that situation is, and we want to put our stuff in there, the stuff that we know, and we need to be careful to make sure that we're listening to exactly what God says, because it's easy to put your stuff in there and kind of mess it up a little bit. Abraham with Sarah, with the son, and all of the other people in the great giants of the Bible. So not only do we need to understand the move of God and react when God tells us to move, not only do we need to understand the gift of God and why he gifts us and how we're not to use that as a weapon against anybody else, but just continue to be great as he makes us great, continue to be a blessing to others as he makes us a blessing. And so not only do we need to know the move of God and the gift of God, but the last thing God wants us to see in this message is the choice of God. God made a choice of Abram. And we need to understand that when God makes the choice, we can't fight against that. When God made the choice of Jonah to go to Nineveh, Jonah said, no, God, I don't like those people. And I know you, I know you love everybody. You just love everybody. And you, you, if I go over there and say, uh, don't do this anymore, stop doing this, you'll give those people a chance and you'll bless those people. I don't want them to have it. I just want to curse those people. <laughs> I don't like them. And so Jonah went through all of that troubles he had. The choice of God. Whoever God chooses, he equips. <laughs> That's good news. Whoever God chooses, he equips. He gives you everything you need. He gives us just the things that we really need. And so look at verse 4. And we're just going to deal with the latter part of verse 4. So Abram departed as the Lord had spoken unto him. He, was, he, he responded to the move of God. And Lot went with him. And Abram was 70 and five years old when he departed out of Haran. And so we can deal with the whole issue of Lot and going with him and all of that. But, but Abraham left and did what God said. And Abram was 70 and five years old when he departed Haran. So first of all, young people, listen up. Never underestimate the wisdom of years. You know, you look at some people and say, well, uh, no, I'm not going to talk to them. They, they are old. <laughs> they don't know this. Never underestimate the wisdom of years. Because with years that comes experience, you've gone through something. When somebody has uh, an ability to uh, understand what God is saying, that means they can give you wise counsel. Don't underestimate the wisdom of their years and the situation you're dealing with. Well, they didn't have computers back then, so they don't understand it. They didn't have social media back then, so they don't know. We socialized face-to-face. <laughs> uh, -face. The people before me, that's one of the things that I, I, I just thank God for. He's put people around me, and I've been in situations that I've always listened and observed people. Uh, I remember it in high school one summer working uh, as a groundskeeper for the Medical College of Georgia. It was a summer job that, that we were giving out and uh, being around some of the other guys. And sometimes I was by myself going out and picking up and cleaning up the campus and all of that stuff uh, around the college. And uh, sometimes the, the older guys, they, they were in different departments and they were doing some work and they had to uh, break up a sidewalk. And uh, so it was a whole lot of stuff going on with that. But here's the point that I want to make. Uh, they, they would, I would look at them and see that they had T-shirts on. This is in June and July, working in the summer in Augusta, Georgia, hot. <laughs> and so they, but they would have T-shirts on under their shirt. And I was kind of listening and wondering about that. And I don't know if I asked the question or they just told me as they were talking. And they said, yes, yeah, son, you need, you need to make sure you wear a T-shirt too under there. And I'm thinking, it's hot. 
I'm wearing just the shirt that I have, and that's it, because I don't want to get all hot. They said, no, we wear the T-shirt because the T-shirt absorbs the sweat. And when you sweat and it absorbs that sweat, it makes it wet and cools the body, helps keep the body cool. That's the purpose of sweating anyway. So it absorbs that sweat. It doesn't get dry. We don't wipe it off. They don't wipe it all off. It gets absorbed in that shirt, that T-shirt. And so under that shirt, it keeps their body cooler that, that they can continue to work it. In the, in the sun. Hmm. Never underestimate the wisdom of years. We need to seek wise counsel. Look at Proverbs 1 through 5. It, it tells us about seeking wise counsel. We need to listen to people who have some wisdom, wisdom of years. Don't think that those old guys or those old ladies don't understand. They don't understand this. They don't understand that. Ecclesiastes tells us that there's nothing new under the sun. There's nothing new under the sun. We think we're doing something new, but in some way or some fashion, something like that, the decision has been made. Yeah, the technology may be different. There weren't rockets going to the moon back then. There weren't all these mass we weapons of mass destruction back then. But the same concepts were there. People that wanted to kill somebody some kind of way, they found a weapon to do it. Somebody who wanted to do something and go places that God says, no, I put you here on this earth. And God says that when they built the Tower of Babel, that they would put anything they put their mind to, they'll try to do. They wanted to build a tower to heaven to get where God is. So God confounded them. So there's nothing new under the sun. Satan's methods may change, but his assault is the same. And so there's some things that you're dealing with in your life that somebody older can tell you about. They've been through that. You think that just because they've been in church all their life and they're the pastor, they're the deacon, they're the mother and all of these things that they've never been through some things. And they have some wisdom of years that they can give to you. Stop thinking that new things are the answer and believe that God's word is the only answer. Hear that again. Stop thinking that new things are the answer. It's got to be a new this, a new that, a new way. We're going to new, do this new thing. We're going we're to do that. When God says there's a new thing, let God bring the new thing. Let him bring the greatness to you. Stop believing that the new thing is the answer and, and believe that God's word is the only answer. And that's the new thing in your life if you've never followed it. But guess what? God gives us a, a word and he says, I've, I know you've already studied this. I've already put this on your heart or whatever. And I want you to listen to that. Follow that. Young people, make sure you're looking at those things. Elders. Yeah, it's not just about what the young people are doing and not doing. But uh, as elders, we need to, there's some things we need to listen to. Encourage, mentor, nourish, Befriend, create something with youth in mind. Create something with the youth in mind, the future. You need to encourage young people. We need to continue to encourage them along this journey. That, yeah, you made some mistakes, and I made some mistakes too. Let's stop acting like the thing that they've done is so, so different because we just, as we said, there's nothing new under the sun. There's something you've done wrong or people you know have done wrong. It's not the end of the world. Deal with them. Encourage them. Mentor them. Show them the way. Be that light. Be that a good example. Nourish them. Give them good stuff. Give them good advice. Give them, uh, yes, you maybe love to do this, that, or the other, but that's not good for, you know, you know that's not really good for your health. You've done it, you've done it because that was your comfort zone. You may be uh, smoking cigars or, or drinking, you know, whatever your definest of liquors, but you don't have to do that over and over because young people see that and they want to think that they can just do it and they get that hard stuff and think they, they, they can swallow and guzzle this stuff down or smoke cigarettes and they're getting cancer and getting this. We need to nourish them with good stuff. Let them find their own way in those things. Befriend them. Be their friend. Be a friend that will give them good advice. Now, here, just be careful. Because some parents want to be only their child's friend. No, that's not what I mean. You, you need to be parent. Be, be a friendly parent. That you can, they can stop and, and listen to you. And you can give them some advice and say, all right, it's up to you. 
You see. Create something with the youth in mind. See, here, and that's one of the problems in the church, that we're not creating anything with the youth in mind. That, that yes, you are the financial secretary now. Yes, you are the uh, president of this auxiliary. But you, you can't be there till you're 99 years old and then pass away and die. And then we figure out who's going to be next. You can't stay in that position even at 50 years old and, and, and get sick and ill and nobody knows where the records are and all of this because you hoarded everything. No, create some things with the youth in mind that there's somebody youthful that can come in and keep the church going, keep the auxiliary going, keep the ministry going. And even in our families, we need to do that in mind, with that in mind. Give them a future. Create something that means something. Teach them how to follow so they may learn to lead. Mm. Teach them how to follow so they may learn to lead. See, that's one of the problems with the world today. So many people are so busy wanting to be the leader, want to be the manager, want to be the supervisor, want to be the president, want to be this, and they never followed anybody. They sat around complaining about this, that, and the other, rebellious. They were supposed to do this and then never turned it in. They were supposed to be there at this time and came 30 minutes late and then played it off and then blamed somebody else. They never really followed anyone and done the thing uh, that they were supposed to do in that followership role, and now they want to be leaders. Teach them how to lead by make, teaching them how to follow. Simple things is following directions. I, I, I used to love in high school that uh, in science and with the labs, I'd say, okay, we're going to go over the steps of the lab before we get there. And we're going to make sure that you have all these things. And then when the time for the lab, then you're going to go at it. I'm not going to tell you. If you're asking me, what do we do next? And you already have the guidelines there. You have them right there in front of you. And we've talked about it. No, you need to know. So when you make that mistake, you know that sometimes when you don't follow directions, the experiment doesn't, doesn't work out. And you're not able to continue it because if anything else you do after that is wrong. People don't like to read directions in this new generation. Some people don't like to read directions. Allow them to see your testimony, to see your love for God. Ooh. Yeah, that's what we need to do. They need to see the things that God has done for us by just doing things and being around us and seeing our love for God, to see and experience your love for them. I'll never forget one year that the young people were saying that the, 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 the other people in the church, they don't love us. The older people, the adults, they don't love us. And dealing with youth. I had to tell them, no, 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 no. That's not true. You're seeing something, a response somebody made to something we wanted to do, and you're taking that the wrong way. Uh, but they, they love you. And, but we need to show it to them because if we don't, they're going to think that the, the church don't love you. They just want to tell you what to do. And stop saying, elders, listen up. Stop saying, I'm too old. Stop saying, I'm too old. Look at that last part of verse four again. And Abram was 70 and five years old when he departed out of Haran. And I hear some of you, one of the first thing you want to say, well, you know, back then people lived to this year old and that year old and all of that. Well, whatever the case may be, they weren't living uh, at this time to 900 years. No, uh, and all of that, and there's only no one person, Methuselah, who was the oldest person known in the biblical record. But here, this man was 75 years old, still at his parents' house, and God's saying, it's time for you to move out and do your thing now. I have something for you, not just for you. It's gonna, you're going to get some blessing along the way, but there's something for you. Stop saying I'm too old to do this. It's, I'm, stop saying I'm too old to start this new business. I'm too old to you know, marry somebody. I'm too old to go out there and support this group or, or to work with this group. Excuse me. You can support people no matter how old you are, but we don't want to lead in anything because we say we're too old. If there's no one working with the youth and you're 75 years old and God says go work with them, you need to do so. Because God knows that there's something that I'm going to plant in you along the way and show you how to do it along the way. And I know, you know, you know I, I love working with the youth and youth, but I'm 67 years old and I'm not looking to be somebody's youth department leader. But I will still work with young people. 
And I still do. And so to be that bliss, stop saying you're too old. God says, I have something for you. And when we think about our age and, and the limitations of those things, those, that doesn't limit anything. When God blesses you to do something, do you need to do that? To be the blessing God has ordained you to be, you must leave some stuff behind. And if you think you're too old, then that's your problem. I say, if you, I tell people all the time, they, tell, they joke around, yeah, I, I used to call people old and say, people never thought of myself of being 67. And I don't think of myself as being old. Uh, I say, think of myself as getting older. But I tell people, if you're not getting old, you're dead. If you're not getting old, you're dead. And so I want to keep getting old. And I want to keep doing the things that God has for me to do and know my limitations and to work within those things that God has given me. So if, do you want to be the blessing that God has ordained you to be? Then you must leave some stuff behind. You got to get away from some people. And don't worry about it. They could be so close people to you and, and you love them and they're not really messing with you. But God says, for what I have for you to do, I need you to get away from them because you're going to start thinking like they think and start, they're going to give you suggestions. I need you to get away from that. Sometimes getting away from them doesn't mean moving to another country. You just have to silence them out and start concentrating on what God has. Are you ready to get out of your comfort zone? Are you ready to do the things that God has for you? Then get ready for the move of God. If you're ready to get out of your comfort zone, get ready for the move of God in your life. and Be ready to respond in the positive, in the affirmative, when God tells you to move. And don't sit there asking too many questions. When God says, I'll show you the way, then say, yes, Lord, I trust you. Get ready. Uh, if you're ready to get out of that comfort zone, you need to get ready to receive the gift of God. God will bless you immensely if you are going to listen to what God has for you. Uh, if you're going to do those things and, and be a obedient to God's move in your life. Be ready to receive the gift of God. God will bring greatness into your life. God will bless you. God will give you a prominent name. God will make you like him, that you will be able to bless people just the way he blessed you. Get ready to receive that gift of God. If you're wanting to get out of that comfort zone, you need to accept the choice that God made. When God chooses you to do something, stop thinking of other people who can do it. Stop thinking that somebody else should be able to do this instead of me. Do what God says. Stop thinking that you're too old to do that. Or maybe I'm not tall enough. I'm not, uh, uh, I'm too, too overweight to do that. I'm too much of this, uh, of this that I can't talk right, as Moses said. I, the, I don't know how to talk before people. I have a stammering tongue. Just go with the choice that God has made because God will equip you on that journey. God loved us so much that he gave his only begotten son. Isn't that our blessing? Isn't that the blessing that we want? God says, I have a blessing in store for you if you would be obedient to my move. It's, but he didn't just stop there by saying, I'm going to give you my only begotten son. That he went on and said, whosoever believes in him <laughs> should not perish, but have everlasting life. That's the ultimate blessing that God can give us. And God says, that blessing that I have for you, I have for everyone. And you can go out and share the message of the good news of Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, that they will be a blessing right there in, our, in their life as well. That's the ultimate blessing that God has in store for us. When he's got to make that move, we just have to get out of the stuff that's holding us back and choose the gift of God. God says, if you just listen to me and move towards the blessing I have for you, my only begotten son, Jesus, who came and hung, bled, and died on Calvary's cross for all of our sins, if you move towards him, I'm telling you that this is the way to eternal life. And I want to bless you if you would just listen to me and the move of God that I have for you and choose the gift that I have for you. That is eternal life. We are never too old to accept the calling God has on our life. So you need to be ready. When God says, I have something for you, get ready for that move of God. It's time to get out 
of sin and enter into the blessed life that God has for us. And if you want to move from sin, you're tired of that, that being comfortable around the sinful ways of life and you know that that stuff is getting to you, you need to get out of some things. It's time to get out of that comfort zone and you need to accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. And we offer him to you right now. We offer Christ to you. That's the good news that God has for us. That's the greatness that God has for us, the blessing that God has for us, the prominence, the, the likeness of him, that we can call ourselves Christians and we're being Christ-like. That means that we are the true children of God. You can accept Christ as your Lord and Savior now. Put your name in the comment section. Let us know that, you know what, I've been on life's journey for a while and I, I've been struggling with some things and I know, Lord, that, that, that there's something that you have for me and that the life is better and I want to stop living this life. I've been too comfortable in the ways of the world and I, I want Jesus to be my Lord and I want him to be my Savior. I'm going to commit myself to that. Put your name in the comment section and we'll get in touch with you and we'll help you find that church. We would love for you to be a part of New Beginnings House of Worship and all that God has given us to do. But we know that the most important thing is that you become a member of the household of faith, the church of the living God. And so you can be a part of this uh, membership, this, this, this great uh, brotherhood sisterhood of, and of all that God has for us by get putting your name in the comment section if you don't want to put your name in the comment section here but you want to confess that and here's the thing don't wait and say I want to just wait until I can go where I think I want to be because you don't know if you'll make it to there you want that gift and that blessing that God has for you right now that God will bless you. And so put your name in the comment section, or if you don't want to put it there, you can reach me at Pastor New Beginnings, H O W at gmail.com. That's Pastor New Beginnings, H O W at gmail.com. And leave me a message there, or you can contact me at 615 473 5464. 615 473 5464. Leave me a voice message or leave me a text message so that I accept Christ as my Lord and Savior and I will contact you. We'll pray together and we'll get you on this journey that once you've already made that confession of faith and you truly believe that you're already in the household of faith. We do baptism as an outward show. So, but that the most important thing is to make that confession of faith. And so if you've been on this journey for a while and maybe you've been stumbling and you've fallen away you become that prodigal son or that prodigal daughter. Contact us and let us know that I want to rededicate my life. I want to be all that God has for me. And we'll get with you, pray with you, and help you to continue on this journey. So we, if this message has meant anything to you, hit the like button, uh, share it with your family and friends. If you have comments or questions, contact us through this uh, Facebook or if you're watching it on the rebroadcast on YouTube, uh, you can leave a message there. It's probably best to contact me uh, through uh, our church uh, email, Pastor New Beginnings at HOW at gmail.com or leave uh, my phone number, uh, my cell number. We've left that on this post as well <laughs> because sometimes the YouTube messages uh, disappear after a while. But God bless you. We, we just thank you for being here with us. And remember, uh, this is Breast Cancer Awareness Month. We're at the end of it. Uh, we wanted to share more with you this month, but we had other things going on uh, that we didn't get around to that. <clears throat> But we want you to remember that, as Sister Turner, she said, just because this is awareness month, that doesn't mean you stop thinking about it in the other months. So if you're a young lady out there and you've never had a mammogram, a self-exam, start that now. Get into that process now and, and do all that uh, you can to make sure that you are uh, aware of your situation and that you can do the right thing. The Lord bless thee and keep thee. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May he lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. God bless you.